And welcome back to All Over the Map. Thanks for tuning in. On this episode, we have news of the day for the 25th of April, 2024. This is the GeoGuessr game we play where we feature five news and sports events from around the world and try to figure out where they are happening on a map on GeoGuessr. And we go into the articles, we explore them a little bit. And uh, here we go. We're going to get right into playing news of the day for uh, the 25th of April. We're going to do this game as a new time limit moving, panning, zooming allowed challenge. The play along link, if you want to play along with this game, is uh, in the description below, as is, as are, I should say, the articles for each of the rounds featured in today's game. So let's get into the, uh, find out the first news event of the day, see where it takes us. And it's taken us to the windy city of Chicago, and this picture doesn't look like the, no, I would say the old Sears Tower, the Willis Tower is there. We're looking here at a interesting stadium. We see the Bears, the Chicago Bears. We start with the sports event, sports news thing today, a lot of American flags. We see this uh, old exterior, the old exterior, and the newer, I would say newer, but fairly new interior of Soldier Field. We take a look, quick look down here uh, along the lakefront in Chicago, Illinois. And uh, there's the stadium, the Chicago Bears, right here. So why are we here? Well, the Bears are asking taxpayers for $2.4 billion in subsidies to build a $4.75 billion dome stadium along the lakefront you can see it here this is what it's going to look like i guess it looks like the same exact location there's the city there i think we're right along the stadium here so the chicago bears unveiled plans on wednesday to build a futuristic domed lakefront stadium at the center uh, of the museum campus and ask taxpayers to pick up the bill brandon johnson the mayor of chicago who took office less than a year ago after vowing to end decades of disinvestment on Chicago's west and, west and south sides, enthusiastically endorsed the project calling the renderings of the futuristic oval-shaped stadium with the translucent roof miraculous. Today's announcement is bigger than football, said Johnson, uh, a 77,000-seat stadium. Um, will this invigorate, reinvigorate the entire city of Chicago? I'm not so sure. $2.4 billion dollars for the taxpayers of Chicago to pay is a hefty bill. That is for sure. Um, this is an adequate stadium I, for me. I mean, it looks great. I think it was refurbished or redone not so long ago. Somebody might know. But for me, I'm not a big fan of taxpayers paying, picking up the bill to build these massive coliseums. When at the end of the day, how many jobs does it provide? Is it helping those in the south and west side of Chicago? I'd argue not. Love to know your thoughts on this because I'm not sure how many of you in Finland, Germany, around the world have the same thing. Usually the club pays for it. So this one I'm not a big fan of. Although the one thing I will say is it could, with the Dome Stadium, they could get the Super Bowl. But again, that's one every, that could be one every 15 years, one every 10 years at best, right? So I don't know. I don't think the return on investment for this for me personally is something that's worthwhile here. I think the investment would be much better going to other resources and helping people with jobs and stuff like that. That is just my take. That's my opinion. Everybody can have their own opinion there. Uh, love to know your opinion on this one. The Chicago Bears, will they do anything? Also, tonight is the NFL Draft, the beginning of the NFL Draft, where for those who are not familiar with the National Football League, American football, they select players from top colleges to each of the teams throughout the NFL. And that is tonight. So the Chicago Bears, there we go. Uh, the Chicago Bears of the NFL for the first round. Second round, this is a place I'd love to be right now. I'm sure you would as well, especially if you're in snowy parts of the world currently. Beautiful beach. I've actually personally been to this island or this, this I guess, overseas territory of the United Kingdom. Beautiful. Look at that. You can see right through the water. And beautiful beach there. Nice resort, palm trees, white sandy beaches. Look at that. That is one heck of a view. And why would an island 
with beautiful scenery, beautiful water be on the news today. Well, an interesting, this is one of our interesting stories of the day, because we'll have, we'll feature a lot of these on news of the day, different stories from around the world, important news, interesting news, and sports news. This one's more of the interesting category. Americans facing charges in Turks and Caicos for carrying ammo. Ryan and Valerie Watson visited, visited Turks and Caicos for a birthday trip. He is facing a minimum of 12 years in prison for loose ammo and luggage. Yeah, so let's look at this. A vacation to Turks and Caicos turned to a nightmare for one Oklahoma couple. Ryan and Valerie Watson visited the islands for a birthday trip earlier this month, but as they were about to head home, they were stopped by airport security. Confusion turned into terror. They, so they have claimed to found ammunition in his carry-on luggage. He called it a bonehead mistake, that is for sure. One that's accidental, but a new law that's him facing up to a dozen years in prison. He was granted bail Wednesday, but is forced to remain in Turks and Caicos away from his wife and children. There's no answers when he'll be returned home. His next court date isn't for another six weeks. So he's got to stay in Turks and Caicos for six weeks. That's an expensive place to travel to, that's for sure. So hopefully this guy's got some money because uh, I'm not sure what you're going to do. It's an island. And we'll find out where this is in a moment. So 12 years facing, you can read the rest of the article, Turks and Caicos Laws Difference from the U.S. Uh, bullets. So I guess it, it probably bullets left in the bag. It says here, from a previous hunting trip to Texas. I guess that could happen. I could understand that. But you got to be a little more careful in this such scenario. But they have a 12-year minimum, a 12-year minimum prison sentence, which for ammo, for, there's not even a gun, I don't think. So here's the Turks and Caicos Islands. For those of you not familiar, the guy is from, the family's from Oklahoma. So a lot of people fly into either Atlanta or Miami, and then they go on to uh, Turks and Caicos, which isn't that far. It's like an hour flight from Miami. So it's a pretty, pretty, pretty popular destination for many Americans to get to the sun, surf and sun, especially in the wintertime. Um, and then where the majority of people visit is Grace Bay or the Providentialis is what this is called. You'll fly into here. Uh, I've actually been here, but um, which is a beautiful, beautiful island. But I think we're somewhere around here. Grace Bay Beach, one of the top beaches in the world. That is for sure. And anybody that's been here, I'd love to hear from you. If you've been here, you know what I'm talking about. Beautiful location. But now you know. Don't bring any ammo loose. Forget it. Like, just figure it out. So there we are. Turks and Caicos. And, yeah, good luck to that guy. All right. Well, we go to another beachside seafront place with a frog and a head. I'm not sure what this is all about. Somebody could read that. There's a package there. I guess it's this guy that's taking the photosphere, some pigeons, a Ferris wheel, and uh, where are we for this one? Well, we are in Ukraine for this one, and why are we in Ukraine? Well, Ukraine, I wouldn't say this is an escalation, but it's an interesting change in the Ukraine-Russian war, and it's uh, using these long-range long ballistic missiles against Russia for the first time. The U.S. provided Ukraine with powerful ballistic missiles this month, but did not reveal it publicly for operational security reasons. Okay, um, But anyway, the first strike was about 100 miles inside of Crimea's border on the morning of April 17th, targeting a Russian military air airfield. Um, Ukrainian military has used the U.S. provided Army tactical missile system and targeting Russian forces east of Berdansk. Um, so yeah, so this is kind of an interesting, I wouldn't say, I'm not sure if it's an escalation, uh, in it, but it was, I did read where, uh, Russia did say, if you're going to use these longer range ballistic missiles in Ukraine coming from the West or the United States, we're going to expand our footprint to where those locations are, which means this continues and this escalation, I would could say it's not Again, um, probably a good thing, but it's targeting these uh, ballistic missiles are targeting this area here in Ukraine, which is being held by Russia at the moment. And we'll look up Berdansk. Here's Crimea here, and Berdansk is here uh, on the coast. So, 
yeah, there's the monument. I'm not sure what monument this is for. Somebody could let me know in the comments down below. Love to know your thoughts on this, but for me, it, from an objective standpoint, this just looks like a, I wouldn't say escalation, but a continuation of what's been going on and probably uh, no resolution to come. Actually, the Zabi monument here on that one. So that is Ukraine for the third round. The fourth round, we move on to another seaside water area. So it seems like we've gone from um, Turks and Caicos, Ukraine, the lakefront in Chicago to now we're in a location here in Finland. So wonder why we're in Finland. We do feature Finland a lot on this channel because there's a lot of viewers from Finland. Uh, if you're from Finland, welcome to say hi. But we're going to take a look at the article here. On this for Finland, the Baltic gas pipeline ruptured by Chinese by a Chinese ship is back in service after a forty million dollar repair job. The gas pipeline between Inku, Finland, and Paldiski, Estonia, was severed last October. The likely culprit was a Chinese ship bound for Saint Petersburg, which dragged its anchor along the seabed. So the Baltic connector gas pipeline. That's interesting for me. So it drags an anchor and destroys the pipeline. Um, but the repairs have been completed. The damage site was located at a depth of 60 meters on the seabed. So let's take a look at this. You already see it here on the map. They kind of give you where we are here if we're in Finland, obviously. But the connection between Estonia and Finland from a gas standpoint was, um, was uh, severed. So here's the anchor. So Finnish authorities raised the anchor believed to belong to the Chinese ship Nunu Polar Bear. So you can read into that um, what you want, but I always find it interesting during these times that a ship is just dragging anchor like that. I guess it happens more than we like to think, but infrastructure. So I always think about the thing in Baltimore, United States of America, that ship hitting looked like it hit it right on. Like, are these things coincidences? Or are these things just naturally happening? I don't know. Um, one could wonder. That's for sure in this one. But uh, this location here in Ku, um, here on the southern coast of Finland, we've been here before, but you see here Paldiski, this gas pipeline coming through here, and this is a major shipping channel. So, uh, yeah, like I said, it could happen. Uh, but uh, we're actually on this bridge near Cafe Wilhelmsdal in Inku, Finland, for the fourth round. And for the fifth and final news event of the day here on News of the Day on all over the map, we have Moulin Rouge in Paris. And why are we here? Why are we looking at Moulin Rouge? And why are these guys looking at us? But, uh, well, what's pretty interesting about this one is the sales that we see there, that everybody knows when they see it, because most people know, have fallen off. Overnight, last night. Not sure what's going on. You see here, where's the Moulin? What's going on with that? The windmill on top of the world famous Moulin Rouge Cabaret Club in Paris has lost its sails. The blades fell onto the street below in the early hours of the morning. The cause of the collapse isn't clear. Police say there were no injuries. The first three letter have also fallen off, as you see here. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really sure. What's going on here? If there's a big windstorm or if somebody just uh, says there's no signs of foul play and it was a technical pop problem. But I don't know. That's very, again, suspicious. My mind sometimes goes to suspicion. You know, is it wind? It's not wind. What's the next thing that it could happen? Could it naturally happen? Well, I could see this thing falling off this direction, knocking off those letters. That could make sense as well. I'd uh, love to know your thoughts on this and the other articles as well. What's your thoughts on the Chicago Bears new stadium? What's your thoughts on the Ukraine-Russia war? Uh, Finland gas pipeline? Is that, is that, do you think that was deliberate? Do you think it was accidental? Or do you think it just happens? I'd uh, love to know your thoughts on this. Uh, feel free to comment down below. With the Moulin Rouge here, we need to find out where this is. It's in Paris. We know that. Uh, let's find the location. But um, yeah, just an interesting news event. If you have any suggestions for, or any ideas, anything that you want me to cover on news of the day, because we're going to try to do this on a, a couple days a week. I'm also going to post on X, try to do it more frequently. 
uh, some games that are going to be posted over there. So, so come check me out on X because I'll do some of these days where I'm not doing a video, but I'll do it over there with a link to the play along. Uh, so come check me out there. Uh, but yeah, news of the day. I'm having fun with this. Really enjoy it. Um, hopefully you do as well. Let me know if you do. And Moulin Rouge is somewhere in this area north of central Paris. Well, I think we're around here. Let's go for that. Yeah, a couple of blocks away, Moulin Rouge. La Machine du Moulin Rouge. O'Sullivan's by the Mill. Sounds like an Irish pub. Anyway, Moulin Rouge there for the fifth news event of the day. And there we are, 24989. It's the 25th of April. Hopefully where you are, you're having a great day. As, as always, appreciate each and every one of you that tune in and support the channel. With that said, until next time, cheers.